All right, we're now talking cross-country skis here at Gearheads in Petawawa. But I'm busy trying to pick up my winter toque. Which one do you think? I like the pom-pom. The pom-pom? Did I have it on the right way or backwards? I don't know. I didn't see. This is the front. <laughs> okay, then I definitely <laughs> had it on backwards. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, I like the pom-pom. Yeah, I think so? Yeah. Okay, tell me about cross-country skis. You got a lot of okay. them. Okay. Yeah, there's lots of them, and there's lots of different types of skis. As we said, snowboards and alpine ski. Mm -hmm. Rely on the ski expert in the store to help you choose a ski or do a little bit of research before. Mm -hmm. So we need to know where you're going to ski mostly. Is it going to be groomed trails, backcountry? You're going to be breaking your own trails. There's backcountry ones that are a little bit wider, better flotation, and really flex. Mm -hmm. Flex nice in the soft snow. Then there's touring ones that are designed to be more so in trails that are already been skied on or groomed that are easier to handle that way. Mm -hmm. Then there's Performance Classic, which are designed <laughs> for only in tracks um, that are a little faster. Um, and of course, the boots that go along with the specific types of skis as well. Mm -hmm. And then there's Skate Skis. So skate ski is kind of like the freestyle that you see in the Olympics a lot more. You see classic as well, but a skate ski is a little bit different in that they're lighter and stiffer and, and generally a little faster. Oh, and gosh. also specific boots to go along with those. Mm -hmm. And specific to weight and the poles that you use as well, different poles for different okay. disciplines. So what if I have never cross-country skied before and I have a whole lot of property, yep. I live in Renfrew, in my Perfect. case, and so I've got some loose snow and then my back yep. lot, which set would be best yeah, for Yeah, so I mean, we'd be somewhere in here. We'd talk a little bit about budget, where you want to be and how much you're going to ski, and yep. does it make sense to invest in a higher-end metal edge type ski? Or does it make sense to go with something um, not, not so much entry level, it's a great ski, but this mm -hmm. Fisher BC Crown um, is a really, really tough ski. I think it's crossed Antarctic and holds records and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> okay. or that kind of stuff. But I've had a pair of those for 10 or 12 years and they're a great ski. Right, so it's, yeah. a, it's almost an investment. They're long lasting. Mm -hmm. eh? Now, one thing that I thought was really interesting is that you said that a lot of people don't dress appropriately for cross country skiing because you think case skiing, so you throw on your yeah. downhill clothes. Yeah. But it turns out there's an entirely oh, different, different wardrobe yeah. for cross country. Let's get yeah. RC in here. We've dressed her in cross country skiing clothing, right? That's right. So she's wearing something that's windproof on the front, mm -hmm. um, but breathable on the back, so that while you're skiing, oh, yeah. you need a little bit of wind protection on the front to mm -hmm. stop you from getting really cold, but you still need it to breathe really well. So it doesn't look like she's wearing a whole heck of a lot as far as weight goes, mm -hmm. but with cross country skiing, you're going to be working a little bit more and you're not as exposed to the elements as you are with downhill skiing right. and also with headwear like if I went out for a ski and I wore the toque that you have on yeah. I'd be dying I'd melt <laughs> but I'd wear something closer to what RC has on mm -hmm. um, if I'm going for a good ski if I'm just going out for a walk in the woods mm -hmm. then it's a little bit different you want the toque but you're working a little bit harder so you're going to generate your own heat and what we see a lot of times is people will put on a big thick heavy ski coat like a downhill ski coat mm -hmm. and then they're sweating and then they're trying to peel off layers. We'll see them, they have their coat undone, they got their gloves off, and, <laughs> and we're skiing along comfortable. Um, and a lot of times, if it's cold out, I'll wear something similar to that. Mm -hmm. And when you're finished skiing, you'll have frost on your back and on the backs of your legs. Right. From the moisture coming off. Okay. Yeah. And you've got a set of socks here, too, a little bit different than the ones that we talked about for, for downhill skiing earlier. Exactly. Obviously, they don't need to be as long, mm -hmm. but they also need, you know, proper moisture wicking and warmth and stuff. This is a smart wool sock um, that's designed. It's a Nordic, Nordic type. Yeah. Um, still good support around the arch and stuff like that and a good fit, but... But Just not, not too thick. real heavy. So, so don't think you need super thil, thick wool socks to head out uh, skiing and snowboarding. Thanks exactly. so much for talking Thanks to us this fun. morning. Head to uh, the Gearheads website and check out all of the information. Or, of course, you can always call and get a hold of Damien oh, yeah. and Tammy to learn whatever you need to know. Or sure. come on down to their shop here in Petawawa and check it out.